party like this, it's possible Stop. for the country to Stop. have Doris, such a division Doris, as Doris, they do. Doris, Doris, Doris. Uh-oh, something's happened. George Bush is the president-elect oh. of the United States. He has won the state of Florida, according to our projections. 25 electoral it. votes. NBC News projects that George Bush, it's been a night of first giving it to Al Gore, then taking it away on the part of the networks. George Herbert, George Walker Bush, the new president of the United States, the governor of Texas. More women were, or 54 percent of those represented in the exit poll, sampled in the exit poll, were women, uh, and you know the rest obviously men. Uh, that's obviously uh, not the breakdown in the population, and probably not the breakdown in the voting population. So the question arises: Why would that be? Well, let's check in now with one of our favorite contributors, Fox News contributor Susan Estrich, law professor, writer, columnist, and all-around political master know-it-all. <laughs> Just kidding, Senator. Susan, what do you think about this? Well, I don't know. Why would that be? Maybe oh, you, more women are voting. Well, you got me on that. Um, what, is your, what is your take on it? I don't know. I, I, I'm the one who brought that number up to you guys, and it suggests to me, I, I don't know if it's 54 percent, but what I'm hearing is that in a number of states, you're seeing a very high turnout of women. Even in Florida, I just caught the end of your conversation. But what I'm hearing out of Florida from some people down there is they're seeing a much higher turnout and much stronger carry support in some traditionally Republican counties in Florida. So we'll have to wait and see, obviously. But I think what you have to say right now is that either the exit polls, by and large, are completely wrong or George Bush loses. How's that? Uh, well, work, I mean, I'm, I'm just talking me. to the pollsters back who I'm talking to, and the exit polls are not coming in very well for George Bush tonight. Right. And so you have to just say, I mean, there are years in which exit polls have been wrong. So I think you and your panel can continue to do as you've done tonight, and you may be right, and parse these exit polls and point out that they may indeed be wrong, and people should stay tuned. But the view in Boston seems to be that if the exit polls are right, then it's going to be very difficult for George Bush to pull this off tonight. Right. What's going on is obviously we'll know more later, but the polls have consistently showed in the last few days a trend in Kerry's direction. Obviously, our Fox poll showed that. Now it's possible, Bill Crystal, and, you know, the rest of the guys that all these polls tonight are wrong, and we can wait and see that Bush is reelected. He says Bush is running around 51 or 52 percent in Orlando, mm -hmm. but I think he only ran 48 percent in 2000, so there may be some actual empirical evidence here. It's not a matter of wishing one way or the other. We, we know that in a couple of states, in Virginia, it looks like in North Carolina, Bush is outperforming the exit polls. Uh, if you can do that in Florida, and especially in Ohio, uh, it remains unclear whether Kerry can take one of the big states away from Bush. Without that, uh, it, could be, it could be a very long night. But, you know, it could be that the exit polls end up being basically correct. If they are, it's, uh, it's uh, not as long a night, but, but not a cheerful night for Republicans. 48%, I believe, are the last percentage numbers that came in. And there are the new electoral vote numbers as well. President Bush with 274 electoral votes, John Kerry with 238. Of course, there are still some states to come, but it's pointless at this point. And you factor that in with the fact that John Kerry has called the president to concede, offering his congratulations. He also said he will hold a concession speech coming up between 1 and 1.30 this We're right, is that if, uh, if these exit polls are as wrong this year as they were uh, uh, for Kerry, then John McCain's going to carry some states, surprise some people, and we may have a closer race than, we, uh, than some of the polls have said. Just important to keep in mind, it is very early hours, but you're already getting emails, David, from some folks saying, are we, are we in for a big surprise? Well, yeah, well, it's interesting. Some of the Obama folks are sending emails saying, hey, I'm scared. But look what's happening here. It looks like we're in real trouble. Uh, but it's important to remember back four years ago, for the first hour and a half, we were on here talking about President Kerry. You know, and he was going to celebrate. Those yeah, exit and, polls. And it, early exit, well, there was just wrong. a lot of signs that it was looking like Kerry, especially the exit polls. And I'd have to say, these are, the, these are really preliminary. Nobody should draw too many conclusions. Let's get a little more of the night, and we'll settle it. It's way too early to say President McCain looking at these numbers. <laughs> but as you look, that will change our electoral board from 220 votes to 275, and make Barack Obama, in our view, president-elect of the United States of America.
This is an ABC News special. Your voice, your vote. Election night 2012. Live from ABC News Election Night Headquarters in Times Square, New York. Now reporting, Diane Sawyer and George Stephanopoulos. 86% of the vote has come in so far. Governor Romney opened up a fairly big lead right there, 57 to 42. Now I want to dig down a little bit farther there and see where the vote is coming in. You still see that in the state of Virginia, and Koki, let me bring this in to you. You still see that Governor Romney has a lot of strength now in the southwest part of the state, but you also see, and maybe this is a bit of a surprise, you look up north in the northeast part of the state and you see a lot of red up there in northern Virginia. That's where President Obama has to be strong. That is very surprising uh, and something that the, the president's team has to be very concerned about because Virginia, uh, as, as, you, as Nicole just said, uh, if Ohio doesn't matter uh, if, unless Romney carries Virginia, and uh, if he is if he's doing well in the northern part of the state, then uh, that means that he could he could win Virginia, and that that's a very big win for him. That's right, and there is county to watch in Virginia. Watch yes. Loudoun County up north, mm -hmm. right? Uh, Bellwether County, and right now Romney holding a slight lead even in Loudoun County. Slightly even Slightly in early returns. So a, a true swing county. Yes. And and these are young folk too. This is not this is not you know a bunch of people worried about uh, young right. people taking their Medicare checks away from them. These are the young people. Okay, we're going <laughs> to Mitt Romney underperforming places where he needs to really roll up the numbers in order to win the let state me, let of me stop Virginia. You right and there, as you I'm... can see. Yes. Let me stop you on Virginia because we're looking George. at the Virginia map right now, and it looks like President Obama is having a little more difficulty up in the northern part of the state than I would have expected. So we're optimistic tonight and uh, feel very good about things. And if you're right, you'll have the pleasure of seeing, da seeing David Axrod shave off his mustache. <laughs> Ed Gillespie, thanks very much for coming on tonight. Good to have you with us. Right thanks, now. George. And Here again. Diane Sawyer and George Stephanopoulos. And here we in, mark the time. Here we are. Ohio is in. We are projecting the battleground state of Ohio for President Barack Obama, which means you are looking at the President of the United States, Barack Obama. <laughs> Box apart in New York City, and just hours from now, you will see the next president at one of those podiums. A night of history starts right now. The time has finally come. They've made their case. We will make America great again. We're going to prove to the world we are stronger together. So who will be your next president right now? Live from Times Square, the crossroads of America, with our country at the crossroads. This is ABC Election Night 2016. Now reporting from ABC News Election Headquarters, George Stephanopoulos. Good evening and welcome to Election Night 2016. What a crazy campaign this has been. Bitter, ugly, always unpredictable. The debates, the rallies, the ads and attacks, they're all done now. The decision in your hands. That here, uh, what would you say, North Carolina, Pat? North yeah, Carolina. Uh, it's almost 53-48. That's not good. Um, North Carolina, if yeah, 53-48 with 42% uh, of the vote in 42. Oh, if okay. he loses North Carolina, is there anyone here that believes <clears throat> that he's going to be able to pull this off? Almost, I already it's don't think impossible. he's going to be able to pull it off. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. <laughs> There was a senior uh, Trump advisor on just a minute ago admitting on CNN, yes. it will take a miracle for us to win. It, yeah. Is that it, right? It will be yes. a miracle Which if we win. Senior Trump mm -hmm. I don't know. They just said wow. senior Trump advisor. Senior Trump advisor. Said that. It's, so, yeah, this looks like it's over. I, I, it's, 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 for this job. map is going to be bluer than a choking smirk. Looking for our our job. <laughs> we are so now projecting smirk. Evan McMullen, <laughs> the president of the United States. It's over. Sorry, Trump. I mean, it's too early to call it, obviously, but it does not look good for Trump. There's very few indicators going his way early. And what he needed was to outperform polls, to surprise the polls. Yeah, and so far, we're not didn't. seeing evidence yeah. of that. It's going to be, you know, uh, if, especially if Hillary wins, we're all going to have a reason to get mad together. It's going to bring but us let back. Me, uh, can, well, can, I, earlier, can I ask you, without getting into any details, those who insist you're never going to be allowed to forget right. that you right. didn't support Donald Trump, right. Mm -hmm. right. Right. what mm -hmm. the hell do you do with that? Right. Exactly. Nothing. I mean, no that'd be like me coming out and saying, <laughs> right. you betrayed us by going with Donald Trump, and I'll never let you forget it. Well, that doesn't do us any oh, well. good. No, that's fine. But I mean, on on that. Correct. Look, I, I, I want to, on Wednesday, come back together and play, you know, kumbaya. 
but they need to understand what they did. But they won't. Mm, they're they going won't. to blame that's, it that's on gonna, us. The they're going to blame it, it on yeah. everyone. Yeah. Right. 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 And, and that's my problem because yeah. there's going to be another election in two more years. And we, if we don't learn from our mistakes, <sighs> that's a pro that's going to be that, a problem. That, 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 that bothers me. Like I want to come together, but they need to understand that what we said was going to happen. Dude, look at the maps. Happening. Yeah. Look at the maps. Yeah. I, I, exactly. Yeah. Tom Yamas, you wanted in on this? Uh, well, I just want to say we have some news coming in for the first time tonight. We are hearing frustration from Donald Trump in an interview tonight over. The radio on Lindsey Graham not voting for him. Senator Lindsey Graham, he says it's just absolutely insane. And rather than manning up, he goes and he does a thing like that. I think it's terrible. On George W. Bush not voting for him, he says, Well, I think it's sad. I think it's sad. Donald Trump can't be surprised. He put Lindsey Graham's cell phone number out in front of a microphone, and the ent entire America had it. And with George W. Bush, he savaged him on the war in Iraq, and he destroyed his brother, constantly made fun of his brother and his family. He can't be surprised, but for the first time, George, we are hearing the frustration of what's happening tonight. Okay, got to take another quick break. When we come back, Nate Silver's forecast is changing. We'll have that, plus more states. ABC News live coverage of election night 2016 will return in a moment. Tonight with election night 2016, I want to go straight to Nate Silver from 538, our forecasting guru. And Nate, your forecast is changing right now? A little bit. We have Clinton up to 78%. She was at 72% at the start of the night as more blue states come in predictably to her side. So she goes up even though those states were expected to go her way? Yeah, I mean, you know, what we're seeing is that we have some semblance of a normal election night. In America, you're not seeing New Jersey go red or something like that. I mean, obviously, the first major swing state that's callable shift those numbers a whole bunch. And we're on the edge of four or five or six, maybe not on the edge, but monitoring four or five or six states right now. But, you know, no major domino has fallen, but still the script is going a little bit more how the Clinton campaign would want it. We don't have any swing states we can call, but two other states have come in right now. The state of South Carolina has gone Republican. Of course, we were saying it is a solid Republican state. The only Democrat to win was Jimmy Carter in 1976. And Tennessee hasn't voted for a Democrat since 1996. That goes to Donald Trump as well. Let me bring in uh, one of Donald Trump's biggest supporters right now, Mayor Rudy Giuliani, former Mayor Rudy Giuliani of New York City. Some good news there. Uh, those last two states for you, uh, Mayor Giuliani. I like what a Washington Post reporter just sent out a bulletin saying he talked to you and said, you just left Trump's apartment, said Trump is watching everything even though I'm telling him not to. These are the ones that are going to decide this election. Let's pull up one of the key ones. State of Ohio, John Carl, what are we seeing? Well, this is a, a, a battleground that Trump had been winning in virtually every public poll coming into this election. But if you look at this right now, there's only about a third of the state that's been voted, but Hillary Clinton has a narrow lead. And there are signs of trouble for Donald Trump. Take, for instance, Delaware County. Delaware County, which is right above Columbus. This is a county that Mitt Romney won by more than 20 points. And if you look at it right now, Donald Trump has barely a one-point lead in Delaware County. As you said, only about a third of the vote in. But Matthew, Dad, this is key as well, because as Donald Trump continues to do, hang in there in Florida, maybe ekes out a win in Florida. If Hillary Clinton wins in Ohio, completely cancels it out. Well, yeah, Donald Trump's map has to be Florida, and has to be Ohio, and has to be North Carolina in this. Donald Trump wins the state of Ohio, one of his core four. You saw it right there, a big victory there for Donald Trump. There you see it. Key state, no Republican has ever won the White House with winning, without winning Ohio. Donald Trump has won it. We'll be right back. You heard those chimes right there. We have another state to project it as the state of North Carolina. Big battleground state. It's going to Donald Trump. 15 electoral votes right there. One of his core four states. So Matthew Dowd, he is filling in that map the way he needs to fill it in. Yeah, as we've talked about, she had all the paths in the world when the night began. Now he has multiple paths to the Electoral College to get to 270 at this point. It is now 11.30 in the East. You hear that chime? We have a projection. It is a big one. It is the state of Florida. 29 electoral votes. They go to Donald Trump. Donald Trump has won the state of Florida, one of his must-win states right there. 
one of his keys to victory. He said all along he was going to win that state. He's got a home in that state. He worked hard in that state. He has pulled out a victory there. He is, put, he is pulling ahead of Hillary Clinton. You see it right there, 222 electoral votes to 197 for Hillary Clinton. Matthew Dowd, this is a big one. Argument that they were making and, in and the you final know what day. she talked about. You got a projection there. We have a projection. It is the state of Georgia, 16 electoral votes. They are going to go to, to Donald Trump as well. Bill Clinton won it in 1992. Republicans have won it ever since. Donald Trump continues that tradition. The map continues to get smaller and smaller and smaller. The lead for Donald Trump gets bigger and bigger. He now has 244 electoral votes to 209 for Hillary Clinton. Of course, you only need 270 to win. David Muir, he is closing in. For Donald Trump, this means that Donald Trump will be the 45th president of the United States, winning the most unreal, surreal <laughs> election we have ever seen. This candidacy starting on an escalator ride. From MSNBC, Decision 2020, Election Night. Live from Democracy Plaza, here now are Rachel Maddow and Brian Williams. Here we go, 6 p.m. in the East, and we're underway. Americans have been voting for days, setting records, in fact, and they are still voting at this hour in what is a titanic struggle for the future of our country. It will now be decided during an uncontrolled pandemic in our country, which explains the 100 million-plus votes that are already in. Brian Williams here with you from our NBC News Global Headquarters in New York, joined by my colleague and friend Rachel Maddow at the far end of our expanded studios. Our casino owner here in studio, Britt, Britt Hume, <laughs> follows the betting odds, and you're saying the betting the, odds have just the flipped? The betting odds have flipped completely. You may recall that they were sitting about 64, 65 for Biden, and they went down to 59. Now they've completely flipped. 64.8% Trump. 34.7% Biden. Now, this is shades of four years ago when when that race turned around, uh, something like this time in the evening, um, the betting odds led the way. Now, look, they're just betting odds. They're not votes. They're not electoral votes, certainly, but, but, but they're interesting. I also want to find common ground where I can. Aren't you glad that this election's coming to an end? I've had two calls already. One from President Trump. He's going to win. He is going to win. To all the pollsters out there, you have no idea what you're doing. And to all the liberals in California and New York, you wasted a lot of money. This is the worst return on investment in the history of American politics. The Fox News decision desk can now project that former Vice President Joe Biden will win Pennsylvania and Nevada, putting him over the 270 electoral votes he needs to become the 46th president of the United States. Donald Trump, the 45th president of the United States, who stated in this process, I will never give up fighting for you and our nation, will be denied a second term. That has not happened since 1992 and President George H.W. Bush. Get out of the way. Both Jake Tapper and Nancy Pelosi and all those and every editor at the New York Times has to get out of our way. Let us hit the Republicans in the face instead of playing patty cakes with them. How many elections are we gonna get to a razor's edge with a monster idiot fascist like Donald Trump? One last thing, I swear to God I'm gonna go to Ida. But one last thing on this, guys. Forget him being a racist, forget him being a fascist. The guy's IQ is lower than 70. He's an idiot. He's a total moron. And you couldn't figure out how to crush him in an election? Man, the corporate Democrats and the mainstream media suck at this. They absolutely positively suck and they brainwash smart people into compliance.